All right, the fly that I'm going to tie right now is one of my favorite top water flies for uh, summertime bass fishing. This is a snake pattern I've been tying for a while. I'm going to tie it on size one hook. You can tie it a little bit bigger if you like. That's just a regular bass hook. I want it to be lightweight because the whole point of this fly is to have one that's weedless that you can drag over the tops of matted weeds and structure and cover and not have it get caught up because that's where the bass are hanging out. So the first thing I'm going to do is tie on the, the formation of, of the weed guard. Got some heavy monofilament. This is actually 40 pound mono. I'm just going to thread it through here. Cut it off that way too much. The weed guard that I'm tying on does two things. First of all, it makes it weedless. It also will keep the tail for the most part from wrapping around the hook when you're fishing it. The tail is going to be a long zonker strip and without this it would easily wrap around the hook on about every other cast. So just lay that down. Leave enough here so that at the end of the fly you can bring it back around and tie it off. Now the color I'm going to use is going to be kind of a tan. You can use about any color but I like to have tan. Uh, growing up I used to throw culprit colored worms over these weed patches and they were like a tan pumpkin seed or culprit or browns and blacks and so forth. So I don't think the color is that essential but um, this is what I'm going to start with today. I'm going to do tan with a white belly. So just split the zonker strip, get you a nice little tail off the back. I split the zonker strip there and make a few thread wraps in between that. Just enough to secure it and then just kind of pull that back. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a long strip of white and I'm going to turn it upside down well not upside down but backwards and tie it going off in that direction and I'm just going to leave it off the back as well make sure it's in there nice and tight one of the things I like to do is add a little strip of foam this is just some basic closed cell foam and I'm going to tie on there loosely you don't want to tie on there too tight because if you tighten it down it loses its buoyancy the whole purpose of this to give this fly a little extra flotation. So I'll tie down some like that and then I'll make some loose wraps. Cut off the front, make sure you've got room to finish your fly. I'll make a couple wraps back. And you can see it still, it closes down the profile but still has some of that buoyancy right there. Some of those loops um, create little bubbles of air and buoyant foam sections. Now, very easily, now take this white zonker, get the leather side down, and just wrap it around, just like making a big leech pattern. Just gonna wrap it around, hackle it, palm it. Don't squeeze it too tight because once again you don't want to squeeze the little bubbles of air and foam down. You want to leave that buoyant and gives it a little bit thicker profile. And then tie it off. Alright, I'll tie that down. I'm going to brush this down. Then I'm going to bring first strip over the top and that's going to give it a nice uh, double colored profile the white belly and the dark upper. Now snakes have most of the time have a lighter belly and a dark back just like other animals. I'll stretch this out and tie it down and trim the excess. Now I need to just finish up by doing Tying off the weed guard. Turn that upside down. Hold it all in place. Make a few wraps. And I'm going to pull it out just a little bit, make sure it's got a nice big loop around that. Now the bats will be able to crush that down. So it doesn't matter if it's a little heavier than 40 or whatever, but he'll usually be able to pinch that down when he bites it. I'm going to go ahead and whip finish it and finish this off. Now 
Now one of the things I like to do when I do these weed guards is trim this but leave a little bit of that mono on there. Don't trim it right up against the thread because I have a little burning tool. I'm going to burn the end of that mono and make a little bubble on it. And what that bubble does, it keeps it from sliding back all the way so it won't pull out. So then I'll slide it back and that's as far as it'll go. And I'll go ahead and put a little drop of glue on this one. Well, I'll do it after I tie it so I don't get all over my hands while I'm doing the video. And that is part of the snake. You can see it's got the white belly and it's got the tan top. Of course, it's got a white strip of zonker, so it's kind of like belly as well. But here's the part that makes this really work. Now, that's float. Uh, that, that's buoyant right there. That will float. But what I like to do for the next step. So I'll take a popper head, and I've got another video that shows how I make these popper heads. And this one I don't have a hook in. I just have it drilled with a hole through the center. And I'm going to take, the way you rig this is when you're actually fishing it, pull some of that mono off. And you thread the mono through the head. And this one's got something shoved up in there. So let's make sure that opens up. A little piece of foam in there. There it goes. So you slide that through and then tie it on. Now I'm just going to tie a quick knot. Trim it. And when you fish this, the head actually slides up and down on the line. It's almost like an offshore lure. But as you pull it through the water, it slides down against the fly. And it comes through and keeps it floating on the surface. So you can get a look at that. Call that the sea snake. We'll go have a look at it in the water.